Welcome to a lecture on Heidegger's Poets, which is an excerpt from my Heidegger book published by Springer and also an excerpt of my Heidegger course for which you can enroll by following the link in the description of this video. In the essay, What Are Poets For?, which Heidegger wrote in the immediate aftermath of the Second World War, Heidegger introduces Rilke to this question of Hölderlin. And Rilke is a poet for Heidegger in desolate times, in dürftiger Zeit. A phrase, of course, taken from Hölderlin. In the Contributions to Philosophy, Heidegger views Hölderlin together with Nietzsche and Kierkegaard as a thinker poet who sees the desolateness of the age to come. In what a poet's for, Heidegger says, quote, the age is desolate because it lacks the unconcealedness of the essence of pain, death and love. In what sense is death hidden? The technological age knows as true only what is actual and measurable. Put differently, positionality only knows what is positive and posited. Quote from Heidegger, the self-assertion of technological objectification is the constant negation of death. Technology denies and utterly negates death. Death is the natural enemy of positionality because death is, with Rilke, quote, the side of life turned away from us, unlit by us. As such, death cannot be controlled by technology. Technology must work against death, good death, and pain because they impede technology's will to functionality. Technology works to negate death, for example, by trying to solve death as if it were a technological problem. But to both Heidegger and Rilke, and Heidegger will return to Rilke at the end of his life when he writes in a poem, where are we when we try to dwell in death? Wohnend im Tod, which is a word from Rilke. Death is the other relation, the andere Bezug, the other pulling us in and pulling together. And as such, that other pulling us in, death has more stake in what is than technology can even begin to appreciate. Heidegger recognizes in Rilke a kindred spirit because to Rilke death is integral to being itself. Death and the kingdom of the dead belong as the other side to beings in the whole. Heidegger writes, as that other side which belongs to being, death is not the negation of life or of the actual, but death is rather that which posits what is. Death is, as Heidegger says, the Gesetz, the law, thus the gathering, das Gesetz, the gathering of all, um, of, of none of positing in the sense or positioning in the sense of Gestell. But the gathering of that, as Heidegger puts it, death gathers into the entirety of what has already been placed into the positum of the whole attraction. This is of course closer to Rilke than maybe to Heidegger's own thought. But it's a notion here of setzen of that one is not a technological positing or so, but a setzen of placing. So there's a a sense of place in death, so that the world appears through death, as Heidegger writes in one of the Black Notebooks. Death is that which places into the open precisely because death is the utterly unavailable, and that which withdraws. Death does not posit logically. Its positing or placing is rather a literal setting and placing out of concealment, but a concealment that cannot be exhausted and therefore is exuberant. More precisely, death is the concealment surrounding appearance. As law, death, quote, t quote, touches mortals in their essence and so places them into the entirety of the pure bezug relation or that which pulls together. Death pulls mortals into the pure relation with being. Death binds mortals with the ereignis. Thus, Heidegger learns from the poet Rilke that the holy can only be experienced that which is wholesome when mortals are open to their death and love it 
rather than deny or fear their own death. Heidegger understands the holy das Heile as related to the whole and the wholesome. The subject, which takes itself to be the ground of beings, is attracted to the sphere of techne, precisely because that sphere seems to promise the subject perfect control over beings. But with reference to Trakl, Heidegger points out, the other important poet for Heidegger, Heidegger points out that the subject is the decomposed form, die verwieste Gestalt, actually the decomposed Gestalt of man, which Heidegger, which in an essay which you can find in On the Way to Language, Unterwegs zur Sprache. Heidegger views Trakl as the poet who most vividly provides a possible path out of subjectivity. The subject is the decomposed gestalt of man because it is encrusted, but also because the subject is estranged from its world and has to posit the objects it controls without place. The subject, quote, has been removed from its kind of essential being, and this is why it is the unsettled kind, or actually the unsettled mode. The subject is the free-floating ego, trying to get back into the world, reifying itself as an ego, trying to get back into the world by any means necessary. The postmodern subject, which is not only the ground of all being, but also assumes that it can entirely make itself is the utmost maximum of this decomposed gestalt of the human being. A mere semblance of who the human being is, the decomposed form is unholy, removed from the holy insofar as wholeness is not possible for the subject. Thus Heidegger finds in Trakl a companion for the essential transformation of the human being. Moreover, Trakl determines spirit, Geist, not as reason or spirit as first, but first as flame. This makes him a Heracletian poet. Heidegger recognizes, sees Trakl as the Heracletian poet who moves beyond a blind faith in reason and rationality. But most importantly, perhaps, Trakl poetizes on death. The poem Sieben Gesang des Todes, Seven Song of Death, speaks of the holy number seven. For Heidegger, the poem that sings of the holiness of death, it is crucial to note that the poem speaks of a going down to something strange, and that death summons us to do so. Death is here, that's not the, quote, conclusion to or of earthly life, notes Heidegger. This going down into the abyss, into the unsupported, which death allows, leaves behind the form of man which has decayed, and that is the subject. It is upon those who are mad, verrückt, dislodged, to see other possibilities of being, but those must be strangers on the earth, able to die their death in life, to quote from Herdelin, mortals die their death in life, go under and leave behind the current fades in order to throw open other ways of being for a genuine future connected to that which, ha that which has been, but not the fake future of the myth of progress which calculates a utopian fantasy using the data it has available at present. Such are the ranged calculations of transhumanism, which of necessity must get rid of the decomposed form of the human being as well at some point for the human, or at least its representation of the human as subject, fails to be able to belong to this fanciful science fiction sphere of machines. The coldness of the evangelists of post or transhumanism is the coldness of dead formal rationality, which is itself the most prominent characteristic of subjectivity at its utmost maximum in its apocalypse of itself. Of this cold rationality, Stefan George poetizes. Hence, George is another poet close to Heidegger. Heidegger notes already in 1919 that George is dear to him because George has the capacity to see and describe phenomena directly and vividly and immediately. According to the later Heidegger, what George sees and what his poetry articulates is that there is a calculative maximizing cold rationality at work in modernity. This cold rationality is, quote, itself already the explosion of a power that could blast everything to nothingness. Georg is the poet who most clearly captures the madness, the meaningless, the van sin, 
the senselessness of the age, listening to George, to his sacrifice and renunciation, to the evil also of the age. Right? So the, the, the senselessness is not just madness, it's evil. So this is what George sees, and Heidegger is aware of this, through the sacrifice and renunciation. Um, in a simple poem such as the word, but Heidegger thinks that here there could be a spark, there could be an initiation uh, to move out of the sphere of the machines. Quote, the step back into the sphere of human being demands other things than does the progress into the machine world. Thank you very much.